Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about the book of Boba Fett and more. As always my dear friends before we dive into the news please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post a new video. But as we say around these parts without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber let's dive straight into it. So today my dear friends we've got a lot of news to get through but we're going to start with the book of Boba. Ming -Na when has teased that the marketing for the show is about to begin on a larger scale, which means that we might be getting a second trailer or another kind of teaser in the next few weeks. The show is just over one month away, and so I think it's a given we'll be getting something for Boba before December the 29th. Ming Na Wen posted a tweet suggesting that she'll be promoting the book of Boba with interviews this week, and typically, my friends, when the press ramps up for actors in the build up to a show or movie, it is usually accompanied by more TV spots or teaser trailers. And also, considering Robert Rodriguez called the trailer that we got on November 1st the first trailer, his wording implies that there is going to be a second one. Just like with The Mandalorian Season 2, where we got an initial trailer and then closer to the release date, a second one dropped, which contained brand new footage. We can rest assured knowing we are likely going to get another teaser of some kind in the coming weeks. Now, it's clear as day that after Disney Plus Day, the fandom on the whole has been on a bit of a downer, and rightly so. It might be difficult to get too excited right now, and that's why another Book of Boba Fett teaser or trailer with new footage would definitely lift our spirits and get us excited for December the 29th. I'm so hyped for the series, and I miss doing full episode breakdowns, so that's going to be a lot of fun to share with you. I hope the series is good, if Robert Rodriguez's own words are anything to go by, it's going to over deliver and be all killer no filler. This is the way, or rather, there's always a way, as Boba Fett says in War of the Bounty Hunters. So now my dear Megalorians, we're going to move on and talk about Ryan Johnson because we've now learned that it's not only Rogue Squadron which has been canned, but also Ryan's trilogy. Five years after it was first announced, and yes, it's been five whole years, Lucasfilm have finally decided to shelve it. Very few people actually believed it was going to happen, considering the reception and backlash after episode 8, and also considering his trilogy kept being pushed back. Well, it's now more or less officially being delayed indefinitely, which is a polite way of saying it's cancelled. In a brand new article that talks about what I covered in yesterday's video, which is Patty Jenkins and creative differences with Lucasfilm that that caused her to walk away, IGN also cite Ryan Johnson's trilogy as being canned. Now, while they state the reason is the same for both Jenkins and Johnson, Lucasfilm have not commented officially on either case, and they likely never will. This piece of news came on the very same day that Kathleen Kennedy had her contract renewed by three years, meaning she will remain as Lucasfilm president until 2024 at the earliest. It's no secret that the fandom have a very strong dislike towards the way she's managed the company ever since the buyout. I saw a couple of other channels cover this story, and as with all renewals in the past, the message is clear. This is not something that the majority of fans want to hear. Collider wrote a great piece about this, so let's dive straight into it. Hot off the heels of reported creative differences between Rogue Squadron director Patty Jenkins, Lucasfilm has extended its contract with President Kathleen Kennedy. This extension will have Kennedy running Lucasfilm until 2024. There are several Star Wars projects in various stages of development, as well as another Indiana Jones film. And this news will certainly arouse mixed reactions from fans. And let's be real here, they're being very diplomatic. Kennedy was the hand-picked successor of Lucasfilm from George Lucas when the studio was acquired by Disney in 2012. While the Star Wars universe has brought forth a new trilogy, two spin-off films, and Disney Plus flagship series The Mandalorian, creative differences have marred several of the projects and further intensified the divisions of the galaxy Far Far Away's fanbase. The most recent issues have come about with Jenkins. Her film Rogue Squadron had been announced nearly a year ago at Disney Investor Day celebration in December. Solo, a Star Wars Stories production problems, are the most well documented, with Kennedy and Lucasfilm unable to develop creative cohesion with Phil Lord and Chris Miller. The differences ultimately led to bringing in veteran director Ron Howard, who helped bring home a film that lacked the special Star Wars sheen for fans. Now, I disagree with the wording here because a lot of fans loved Solo, and you just have to take a look at the amount of people who want a sequel. And we're also seeing a resurgence of the character of Kira in the comics. Yes, production was a bit of a disaster, but many fans very much loved it, especially compared to The Last Jedi. They go on to say there are several other films in development, 
namely ones from Taika Waititi and Kevin Feige. Given the nature of Feige and Waititi both playing into the interconnected studio sandbox with Marvel, it's a bit easier to imagine them playing by Kennedy's rules than someone like Patty Jenkins. And then they talk about the big disappointment that we got on Friday. The lack of Star Wars news at this past week's Disney Plus Day makes Kennedy's extension all the more interesting. Aside from the Book of Boba Fett and some behind the scenes stills and art for the upcoming Kenobi series, announcements and recognition about other series like Andor, Ahsoka and the Acolyte were absent. Marvel gave a clear spotlight to their content with Moon Knight, Miss Marvel and She-Hulk, whereas Star Wars lacked that prominent presence. Now, again, they're being very generous with their wording. When it comes to Disney Plus Day, we were let down, and it wasn't because of the leakers hyping it up. That partially played into it, but Lucasfilm and Disney themselves explicitly stated that we would get some announcements and reveals. And technically, yes, we got the Boba Legacy Special and a sizzle reel for Kenobi, but in comparison to Marvel, we got nothing. And I remember even back in August on StarWars.com, the official website, they were making a massive deal of Disney Plus Day. And so in my opinion, it's Disney and Lucasfilm who let us down. As I stated in my video on Sunday, they had planned for reveals for Andor and the Bad Batch. We saw both logos in the press release, but they never came. I just hope we get something at D23 this Friday, but it's unlikely. The more realistic date is during this year's Investor Day, which is sometime in mid-December, where we should be getting some reveals, teasers, and announcements. But you know what, my friends, I'm not too upset. I like to stay positive about Star Wars, and 2022 promises so many amazing shows, some amazing Star Wars content, in many ways, Star Wars is very much alive and well, but it's the marketing side and internal problems at Lucasfilm that really let the brand down. So finally, my dear friends, we have some Star Wars gaming news. We know that Quantic Dream are creating a Star Wars game, but now we have news that apparently it's going to be set during the High Republic era. Some fans are going to be interested, others not so much, but that is the news going round, so let's take a look at it. The mysterious Star Wars project currently in the works at Quantic Dream is reportedly set during the the franchise's new High Republic era. The Star Wars game is still to be officially announced by Disney or Quantic Dream, the controversial French studio behind Heavy Rain and Detroit. But details have repeatedly leaked of the game's development, and this latest morsel comes from a rumor by VentureBeat. Currently titled Star Wars Eclipse, the project is set during the High Republic, 200 years before the Skywalker saga. And as we know, the book sales for the High Republic were very high, the comics attracted a lot of attention, and Lucasfilm are really pushing it. I'm not too much of a fan myself. I did not particularly enjoy Light of the Jedi, but if you enjoy it, more power to you. So if you're a fan of the High Republic, then this will come to you as great news. But otherwise, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this news update. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a massive welcome if you are. And if you're feeling generous and you want more videos that are not found here on YouTube, then why not consider becoming a patron? The link is down there in the description. But otherwise, I'm Star Wars Meg, may the force be with you, and I'll see you tomorrow.